I want to offer today some thoughts on uh, home to talk about what the idea of home means to me and what thinking about home, thinking from the idea of home might do for political, social and economic transformation in Wales. I've spent my adult life moving. Um, I grew up here, uh, well just north of here, I grew up on a sheep farm between uh, Clarach and Borth. Uh, I left when I was still a teenager and after college in Cardiff and then university in London, I spent some time living and working in Geneva uh, before moving to Belfast where I did my PhD. I then moved back to London before moving back to Ireland as I pursued an academic career. In all of that time, I took for granted the ease of moving, uh, both literally, physically and emotionally. And then Brexit happened. Um, and here we risk, I suppose, entering the realm of the political, but I'll be careful. And I've spent the last few years uh, seeking to map and make sense of the new kinds of division that Brexit has created, the new barriers to movement that it has erected in the Irish Sea between these islands. And then after Brexit came COVID. And for a time, COVID made movement, made the journey home literally impossible. Ireland had one of the harshest and longest lockdowns in all of Europe. After what uh, Taoiseach Michal Martin had christened the quote, meaningful Christmas of 2020, we were confined to within five kilometers of our kitchen uh, in our rented home on the north side of Cork City for the best part of six months. And in that time, I had greater opportunity and, and greater occasion than I'd ever had before, I think, to think about that word, home. I guess I became something of a COVID cliche. Um, long days spent uh, working from home or notionally working from home at our, at our kitchen table on the north side of, the, of Cork City really spent in kind of existential reflection about where I'd come from, where I was, where was I going and all of it kept coming back to this idea of home. Was I home and what did that mean? Growing up here I, I don't think I'd ever really felt settled, I'm not sure it ever felt like home. Um, I don't think I'd ever really been in any doubt that I would leave. Um, to me, growing up here as a kid in, in West Wales, Aberystwyth felt like the edge of the known universe. We've heard it described today as the outer spiral arm um, of, of, of Western Europe, which is certainly how it felt to me growing up here. I felt that in order to find anything real, real places, things where places where things actually happened necessarily meant leaving and in particular it meant traveling inland, it meant traveling east because that's how politics, media and culture on this island skew. They're all pulled towards this southeast English center of gravity and so that's where I allowed myself to be pulled to this southeast English Centre of Gravity. I remember childhood visits to friends and family in, in London and the home counties and thinking, God, this is where everything is. This is where all the people are. This is where everything happens. I remember how exciting I found it. Um, how jealous I was of the theatres, of the shopping centres, of the motorways, of the bloody escalators in the train stations and how exciting this all was. And then I vividly remember arriving in London and learning how to navigate the tube network, learning to navigate the buses and thinking my life has finally started. <laughs> and I don't know how widespread a feeling this was, but for me, I think to have, to have stayed would have, meant, would have meant failing somehow. Like I say, I don't know how widespread a feeling that was, but what I do know is that that's what that is what's implied by the expression brain drain an expression which I no longer choose to use uh, for reasons that I'll go on to talk about. What I also know are the numbers. So since 2011, Caradigion has experienced a 28% decline in the number of people aged between 15 and 19. 
a 22% decline in the number of people aged between 20 and 24. Rural West Wales is literally hemorrhaging young people. And the structural reasons for this are all well rehearsed. Um, poor digital infrastructure, sluggish broadband, patchy mobile network coverage, all these things hamper connectivity and make it more difficult to capitalise on the working from home revolution that has flowed from the pandemic. Public transport in this part of the world, uh, in rural West Wales, is, to put it bluntly and honestly, a disaster. Um, value added, productivity, wages, all these things are relatively low here, we know this. We also know that house prices, despite all of that, are relatively high. The impact that the proliferation of second and holiday homes and short-term lets has had on house prices is well documented. A report by the Bevan Foundation, a recent report, found that in Wales in 2021 there were 21,000 properties listed in Wales on Airbnb, of which they estimate some 14,000 could and in my view should be available for long-term habitation. I recently visited for work the village of Cumaregloys in North Pembrokeshire where seafront houses are reported to sell for the guts of a million quid but where there is almost no one left living year round. The inability to rent or to buy a home is driving people, young people in particular, out of their communities, hollowing those communities out and stripping them of their identities. Like I say, all these problems are well rehearsed and well documented. But as I sat in my kitchen on the north side of Cork City, looking longingly across the water, what I also saw it was that West Wales is a hotbed of creative solutions to these problems. We've already seen today how people are working uh, to find innovative technological solutions to the problem of poor digital connectivity, to give just one example. Uh, what I saw where politics elsewhere on these islands, uh, and particularly next door, is defined by division, rancour, and frankly, rank ineptitude. In Wales, what I saw was a will to collaborate to find innovative and creative solutions to the overlapping problems in our politics, our economy, and in our climate. And above all, what I saw was, I think, the resilience and the spirit of resistance represented in the rise of Amma or Heed. We are still here, despite everyone and everything, we are still here as the anthem of Welsh football supporters. And watching all that from, from my kitchen in the north side of Cork City, I knew where I wanted to be. I knew where I needed to be. And that was here. That was home. And since returning to Wales, I've been privileged to meet so many amazing and inspiring people in my work in community engagement, whose work reimagines what life could look like on what David Gange, the historian, called this frayed Atlantic edge of ours. Um, so many businesses, individuals and organisations from the bottom of Pembrokeshire right to the tip of the Theme Peninsula, whose work uh, provides grassroots alternatives to our failing social and economic Models. So just this week, for example, I visited Blyneye Fustinog uh, with work, uh, which is the social enterprise capital of Great Britain. Uh, some 200 social enterprises, uh, sorry, some 15 social enterprises, not quite that dramatic, I mean, it's not that big a place. Um, some 15 social enterprises employ around 200 people. And these social enterprises range from a cinema, a uh, mountain biking centre, a community cafe, a uh, hotel, um, and, and, and so on. Um, in this report, uh, published by Cumni Brovestinog, which um, by their own account provides a parasol, uh, not an umbrella, not quite sure what the difference is, but a parasol for these different organisations, um, the authors draw on the concept of restanza, developed by the uh, Italian anthropologist Vito Tetti uh, to demonstrate how this social economy in Blainai um, draws on and rests on and is a product of 
uh, the conscious, deliberate, and proactive decision of people to stay in blind eye fist in York and in and in the bra more generally. The decision to be at and in the process radically remake home. According to one rendering of the concept, which I've tried desperately to learn off by heart all week and have failed, so I apologise. Um, but I'm going to just read it from the report. So a, a, a rendering of the concept of restanza that's quoted in the report. Restanza means choosing to stay in a place in a conscious, active and proactive way, actively guarding it, being aware of the past while enhancing what remains with an impulse towards the future where a new community is possible. In her report from what she termed radical Vestinyog, um, the Tribune's Grace Blakely uh, discovered that in Blyneye, staying doesn't feel like giving up. Staying doesn't feel like failing. Staying feels like an adventure. That in the radical, uh, what she's describing is the opposite of brain drain. It's the opposite of this uh, concept which some have used to describe how I feel about my home, uh, Hiraith that it's about remaking home. It's not about mourning what was lost uh, or yearning for some vision of community that never existed. It's the active decision to be at and in the process to remake uh, home, to remake community. From this flows what the authors of the report uh, call a new foundational politics of place. Simply put, if people are invested in the social life of a place, then it is the job of social policy to support them to remain in, to live in and to remake it, to give them the creative space they need to be at home and to work to remake it. There are specific policy asks that stem from such a politics of place. These include improvements to public transport connectivity. These include, for example, legislating to provide communities with the right to identify and to buy and to manage the assets that they value. And it includes measures um, uh, like, um, or measures to stamp down and to clamp down on the proliferation of second and holiday homes so that housing can be made affordable. But it also implies a need to step back and to give communities space to shape and envision their own futures, to relinquish a degree of top-down control. Above all, I think, and underpinning this, it implies a duty on all of us, I think, who live in this part of Wales and who call it home, to work to repudiate this idea of brain drain and to work to overcome what it does to how we think about home in this part of West Wales. Because what I've learned from a lifetime of leaving it is how much of a privilege it is to call this place home, how amazing and special a place it is. And in fact, the most exciting thing I've been able to say, I think, and the biggest adventure of all is being able to say that in returning to West Wales, I am, I think, finally at home. Thank you. Jochen Varian.